Hi everybody! Welcome back to the Vulcan JS stream. So in previous episodes we've been working on building an Airbnb clone with Vulcan, and as you can imagine there's quite a few things involved. So uh, we've worked on on bookings, for example, uh, uh, let me restart the app. For example, you know, when a room is booked, we want to make sure that some other user cannot rebook it for the same dates. So that's something we worked on yesterday. And I had to stop to stop the stream yesterday because my uh, laptop was really slowing down a lot and I was starting to run into weird issues with code reloading. But you know, uh, after I stopped, I kept working on it a little bit and uh, got it done. So as you can see, this room has bookings for uh, August 23rd to 31st, and then also 2nd to 4th. And if I try to book it, uh, you'll see that these dates are uh, disabled, so they appear in red. So that works. Now, another aspect of Airbnb, you know, is that you can search by location, right? Y you want to search for a room around a certain address or in a certain city. So we need some kind of uh, map or location-based search. And um, yeah, so if we think about it, there's a few things involved. First, we need to add, I guess we can look at the actual Airbnb site to see how they do it. We need to add a, a location field here, which can take a destination, city, or address. So it could be a city, could be uh, a neighborhood, could be uh, an address. And we'll have to convert that into geographic locations using probably the Google Maps API. So let's say I pick uh, this, which is where I live. So yeah, it, uh, Airbnb has, uh, it's funny, it's showing me like <laughs> something in Indiana for some reason, like, uh, Okay, Osaka is not available, so here, how about Indiana? Close enough. But anyway, we, we probably want to make a do a better job than Airbnb in this case. So, but yeah, we want to geocode this into um, a set of coordinates and then use that to search. And for the search, Mongo actually has some... Uh, some geospatial queries that we could probably use. So th this will be a bit tricky as well, because we need to, yeah, I guess we need to figure out the bounds of the map and let people move the map to redo the search, things like that. Um, and well, we'll also need to figure out how to make this reusable, right? Because uh, ideally we'd want to make this into a generic Vulkan.js component. So a lot of on our plate, and by the way, if you're uh, hanging out uh, in the chat room, just uh, leave a quick message to say hello, so I know that people are watching. But yeah, so the, the big question for uh, something like that, a feature like that that's pretty complex, is where do you start? And I mean, you have to pick a place, right? So I think I would like to do... Um, what I like to do is, is geocode an address and then just display it on a map. So not even searching for now, just um, geocoding. So presumably the address would come from this form. So when people create a new room. Um, yesterday I looked at the Airbnb sign up flow and it's actually quite complex. There's like 10 steps or more, but um, if if you scroll down, yeah, there's this screen where they ask the country, zip code, state, city, street address, and then an optional apartment uh, or, or building. So I'm thinking we can probably use the same data model if it works for Airbnb, you know, good enough for me. So uh, let's go back to our code. And here in, uh, let's see, so rooms and not the components, but the modules, we'll find our schema file. We already have quite a few fields, but we're gonna add a bunch more. So, let's see, country. 
that's going to be a, a string. Uh, for now, we'll we'll just uh, leave it uh, editable. Yeah, that that should be all right. Optional crew. Yeah, for now we'll just use a regular text field. Maybe we'll switch it to a drop down later. Uh, zip code. Oops. I lost my place. Yeah. Zip code. So this would be. Can zip codes have letters? Yeah, some zip codes can have letters. So we do not want to make this um, a number, but a string. Um, what's, what's next? State? Yeah, state, good enough. I mean, not all countries have states, but it's still a pretty standard thing to have. City, of course. Street address. Um... Let's just call this one address 2. Yeah. Um, so that should be good. Let's save. First of all, let's see if these uh, new schema fields appear in our form as they should. Uh, okay. Um, forgot a coma or something, maybe. Yes. I should really get... Uh, uh, debug my, my linting setup to, to avoid these issues. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, when I work on the domain Vulkan code base, it, it, it works. It uh, throws errors, but not here for some reason. But anyway, I'll look into that later. Um, right now, I want to check if those fields are here, and they are. So. One thing we can do actually to make this form a bit nicer is create form groups. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, just copy. Uh, so this would, one would be address. And so if you want to use a form group, you just call it like this. Okay. Cool. Um, so form groups are collapsible. Actually, I, I probably need to give it. Um, right. Mm, let, let's double check how this thing works. Does it take a label? Yeah, it does take a label. And, you know, we should probably just internationalize this, but I'll deal with that later. For now, a label will be good enough. Okay, perfect. So, let's add an address to our existing properties. Um, so, I don't know. Let's, uh, let's find some random address in Japan. Um, I'm not even sure how you do that. gonna pick something okay so this would be the zip code state Osaka city Osaka and then the address I mean yeah, well, there's not a real address here. Um, <laughs> to be honest, I'm not even sure how you get a, an address like... Um, mm, 
Well, okay, well, I guess let's try with this. I don't know if it will be able to ge geocode it properly. Well, we'll see. If it doesn't work, I'll try a different address. It's probably a good idea to uh, to see what happens when the geocoding fails anyway. So, we have our address here, and you'll notice it off it's automatically added to the card component, because all of that is dynamically generated, so that's pretty cool. So, um, now we probably need some kind of hook that will geocode the address. So, where should that go? Um, how can we make this... Um, reusable? Should we create a new package, maybe? Could be like a, a maps package. So we already have a places package in Vulkan, but this one exclusively uses the Google Places API. And, you know, a random address is not going to be like a place. A place is like a restaurant or, uh, you know, uh, a shop. And when you type in the shop's name, it will find the coordinates and so on. But here we want to do that based on an address, so it's probably a different API. So do we, I'm not sure if we should just keep working on this package or create a new one. Um, maybe create a new one. This one is a bit um, specific. So yeah, okay, let's create Vulkan maps. And maybe eventually we'll merge places into maps. I'm not sure yet. Create the package JS file. Um, can probably copy a lot of this. Oh, it still has some old URL in there. Now, um, what do we need? We don't need all of that. We probably only only need core, but we do want to import uh, server and client JS, or actually main to remain and client main and then we'll tell our uh, custom package here a uh, zens room to depend on maps Okay, so we want some uh, callbacks, which will uh, only run on the server. And... Well, or actually, do we want to put... We, we want to keep our package uh, independent from the implementation, so the callbacks are not actually going to be there, they're going to be in Zen's room. So here, actually, we already have one callback for booking, so we'll add some more. So uh, geocode address on new, and this will take the, so on new room. I, I'm giving them really long explicit names because uh, it, it helps with debugging when you have errors. and. So this will take the room as argument and return the room and the geocode address on edit room which will take the modifier um, let's let's double check uh, so not here um, So when we're calling these callbacks, we, yeah, we pass the modifier, the document, and the current user, 
and for the other one we pass the document and current user okay so room current user and modifier room current user okay and we want to return the modifier the mongo modifier and then add callback uh, rooms dot new so do you want this to be sync or async um probably sync so that um so that when people are redirected to the room they just created they have all that geographic information waiting for them if it were async uh, the information wouldn't be there and then it would um, you know be added on the server in the background but then people would have to wait until the until apollo uh, repulsed the server so there, there would be a small like 10 20 second delay and it's not a, a great experience so i think it's better to have people wait like one or two seconds for the api call to complete and we'll uh you know we'll just add some console logs in there just to know what's going on okay um so unknown package that's something that happens a lot lately i'm gonna delete my versions file to force meteor to uh Re refigure out all the packages that are required. So this would be where we make our API call. Now, I think here we're going to import that package um, that we created, uh, Vulcan Maps. I mean, you know, do we really? We could just call the Google Maps API directly. I guess right now I'm not sure how much code uh, is required to do that. If it's just a couple lines, we can do it here. But okay, let, let's keep things, um, you know, even if it's a few lines of code, let's keep the maps thing in the maps package. That seems like a good idea anyway. So um, geocode and then, you know, geocode. Um, now let's see on the Google side of thing what kind of um, what kind of properties they expect to geocode something. So okay, I guess an address. What about uh, country and stuff? Um, query object. So that that's what we want to see. We want to find the. Okay, so I guess it just takes just an address and, and figures out the rest. Not sure. So there's geocode and geolocate. So these are two different things. All right, so we do want geocode. So we'll... Um, uh, okay. So I guess we'll we'll make this string here. Um, well, maybe the other way around. To be honest, I have no clue what I'm doing here because I haven't used this API before, but we'll take our best guess and see if it works or not. And I think that's all of our fields, city, state, state, city. Did I, maybe I forgot city. Yeah. And uh, we'll see what we
I guess we'll, we'll leave this one for later. Okay, so now we need to implement, let's, okay, it still doesn't know about uh, maps, so, oh, maybe I didn't save, that might be it. So, um, so we don't want actually any callbacks here, but we do want Okay, so we have our uh, Google Maps NPM package, which I was already using for uh, Vulcan places. You can copy all of this. So import Google Maps, get the Google Maps settings from our settings file. And then, okay, if they're not defined, throw an error. If they are, initialize the client. And then, well, what do we have here? GoMaxPlank.GeoCode. Now, there's this thing with, you know, we'll, we'll want to... We'll uh, want to make this sync, maybe, probably, yeah. So we'll see how to do that later. But for now, we have our geocode function, it takes an address, we'll log something out. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, uh, this. And um, I mean, this won't do anything, but let's see. So this will happen every time we create a new room. Um, we, we can test it independently from the callback with the shell. So let's see if this works first. Okay, now um, let's take our address. So, okay, let, let's see if this works. Okay, yeah, it looks like it does work. And it was, was pretty fast. Of course, uh, yeah, because this is the, just the, the the console, uh, we can't see the whole thing, the whole object, but you know, that's a start. Could we, um, could we maybe do wait? Could we do this maybe? Yeah, I need to import it again. Okay, cool. So we have some address components. Um, okay, okay, all of this stuff. And then we have our geometry. And yeah, that's that's the important stuff I expect. The location, latitude, longitude. Now, what I would probably do is store all of this in, uh, in a field, in a like uh, geodata field, but extract these two into their own uh, schema field. So let, let's, let's do this right now. So um, this would be uh, So 
So this will not be viewable or insertable by anybody. And it will be a black box, so this is just so we don't try to validate the, the format. And now we have lat and lng. These would be numbers, I guess. Yeah. Unless, you know, yeah, I don't think Mongo has a special type for, um, you know, coordinates. So, um, okay. So now the question is, how do we make this into a sync function? So Meteor has a thing to do that. Uh, ideally, you, we would want to use, uh, uh, what's it called again? async await but I'm actually super crappy at uh, asynchronous programming so huh not sure how well that would work um, the first consideration if we did want to use async await is where we are calling this from so are we calling it from like an uh, async context and we are calling it from a callback And callbacks are um, yeah no I think we can do it because callbacks are called for mutations which are can be async so that should work maybe I'm not not confident at all that it would work Um, I mean, ideally, we do something like this, I think. <laughs> I might be getting it completely wrong. Uh, I probably am getting it completely wrong. So this is something I'll probably figure out on my own unless somebody uh, in the chat room wants to help me out. Um, maybe there's actually a, an example. Um, Let me check because that might just be th I'm putting the async in the wrong place. Oh, actually, it wasn't even there. Okay. I'm like so uh, so certain that I don't know what I'm doing that I'm overlooking like the dumb mistake. Um, so okay, so it does return a promise, which is promising, <laughs> and. Um, So let's see if we are um, here. So yeah, we want to see basically if this returns something or not. And to do that, I think we would do this. And that means we need to do this think I'm actually actually gonna do it on the 
on here too because it will be easier to just test the uh, the edit so um yeah for now we'll yeah we will do it like this and so in theory when we edit this it will run the callback and something will show up here okay so I think it's returning the promise and not the result of the promise I'm not even sure what that is so it's not quite what we want um, but I guess it's a start so I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna leave this aside for now I'm just gonna you know cheat and uh, go into my database and manually enter the the latitude and longitude values so we can move on so um, well first we want to have the ID of this thing no well right here and it's gonna be like db.rooms.update set the ID to this and then set LNG to or LAT to this and LNG to that cool now just to make sure sure Oh, okay. Um, yeah, no, that's not <laughs> that's not what I wanted to do. I didn't want to erase the whole thing. I did use set. Wait. again <laughs> okay so I have other uh, okay, let's take care of that just have an error in my component Um, so yeah, why did it erase the whole document? Because I did use dollar sat. Um, yeah, I have no idea. I'm also not sure why the why my edit form here is not working. Okay, that's weird. It's just coming back with null for everything. So it looks like there's a few problems going on at the same time. Um, first one being this form right here. So okay, l let's oh, okay. So <laughs> I don't have anything at all. Wait.
so I, I do have content but somehow okay all right because that okay I'll just delete that room you know what because uh, it's just causing problems okay so we have our room back now let me check that this is working so apparently not oh so that might be because of the callback actually okay I know what's going on um, I might not be returning the, the right stuff here I mean it looks like modifier yeah I'm returning the modifier it's it sounds like it's the modifier Here, I'm just gonna uncomment this. I mean, there's always these kind of issues, you know, when, uh, especially when live coding, I feel I'm focused on trying to explain what I'm doing, and sometimes I just make dumb mistakes. And here it looks like my um, callback is somehow like clearing out all the data in my modifier, so when I return it, everything is set to null. Not sure why. Yeah, so that that, that looks all right to me. So at some point it's getting uh, messed up. Oh, okay. Um, that's that's weird. So the modifier is the promise? Wait, what did I do? Okay, I'm... Uh Really not sure what's going on. Well, I guess... I guess because this is async... Right, so I guess my callbacks don't support um, async await yet. So that's probably the issue. So let's see. Yeah, I probably need um, to do this a bit later on. So I'll stop here for now. Um, it was at least a, a first step. Uh, didn't go very far, but you know, it's a start. So.
at least we know what we want to do next time. So first we want to figure out this whole async await thing because that's really uh, blocking us. I know how to do it with Meteor, but ideally you don't want to rely on Meteor specific things. It's much better to use like standard coding patterns. So let me figure this out. And then once that's done, we can start uh, adding our geolocation data on our uh, rooms documents on the uh, uh, new documents and on edit documents callbacks. Once we have this, we can think about how to display uh, the location data on the map. And then once that's in place, we'll think about search. So that's basically what I'm going to do over the next couple days. So thanks for tuning in and see you again very soon.